The best protection any woman can have is courage. The moment we begin to fear the opinions of others and hesitate to tell the truth that is in us, and from motives of policy are silent when we should speak, the divine floods of light and life no longer flow into our souls. Because man and woman are the complement of one another, we need woman's thought in national affairs to make a safe and stable government. A government is just only when the whole people share equally in its protection and advantages. I would have girls regard themselves not as adjectives but as nouns. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. Truth is the only safe ground to stand on. Progress is the victory of a new thought over old superstitions. Self-development is a higher duty than self-sacrifice. Strike the words white male from all your constitutions, and then, with fair sailing, let us sink or swim, live or die, survive, or perish together. You may go over the world and you will find that every form of religion which has breathed upon this earth has degraded woman. The strongest reason why we ask for woman a voice in the government under which she lives, in the religion she is asked to believe, equality in social life, where she is the chief factor, a place in the trades and professions, where she may earn her bread, is because of her birthright to self-sovereignty, because, as an individual, she must rely on herself. The Bible teaches that women brought sin and death into the world. I don't believe that any man ever talked with God. The Bible was written by man out of his love of domination. The happiest people I have known have been those who gave themselves no concern about their own souls but did their uttermost to mitigate the miseries of others. A woman will always be dependent until she holds a purse of her own. Come, come, my conservative friend, wipe the dew off your spectacles, and see that the world is moving. To develop our real selves, we need time alone for thought and meditation. To be always giving out and never pumping in, the well runs dry. Nature never repeats herself, and the possibilities of one human soul will never be found in another. Womanhood is the great fact in her life, wifehood and motherhood are but incidental relations. They who say that women do not desire the right of suffrage, that they prefer masculine domination to self-government, falsify every page of history, every fact in human experience. It has taken the whole power of the civil and canon law to hold women in the subordinate position which it is said she willingly accepts. The heyday of woman's life is the shady side of 50. Our pathway is straight to the ballot box, with no variableness nor shadow of turning. I think all these reverend gentlemen who insist on the word obey in the marriage service should be removed for a clear violation of the 13th Amendment to the Federal Constitution, which says there shall be neither slavery nor involuntary servitude within the United States. The woman is uniformly sacrificed to the wife and mother. While women were tortured, drowned, and burned by the thousands, scarce one wizard to a hundred was ever condemned. The same distinction of sex appears in our own day. One code of morals for men, another for women. The history of mankind is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations on the part of man toward woman. Thus far women have been the mere echoes of men. Our laws and constitutions, our creeds and codes, and the customs of social life are all of masculine origin. The true woman is as yet a dream of the future. A just government, a humane religion, a pure social life await her coming. Human beings lose their logic in their vindictiveness. God, in his wisdom, has so linked the whole human family together that any violence done at one end of the chain is felt throughout its length. 
Men as a general rule have very little reverence for trees. Nothing strengthens the judgment and quickens the conscience like individual responsibility. Every man who is not for us in this prolonged struggle for liberty is responsible for the present degradation of the mothers of the race. It is pitiful to see how few men ever have made our cause their own, but while leaving us to fight our battle alone, they have been unsparing in their criticism of every failure. Of all the battles for liberty in the long past, woman only has been left to fight her own, without help and with all the powers of earth and heaven, human and divine, arrayed against her. To refuse political equality is to rob the ostracized of all self-respect. The Bible and the Church have been the greatest stumbling blocks in the way of women's emancipation. On women's role in the home happy smiley every wife, mother, and housekeeper feels at present that there is some screw loose in the household situation. Whatever the theories may be of woman's dependence on man, in the supreme moments of her life he cannot bear her burdens. Religious superstitions more than all other influences put together cripple and enslave women, but so long as women themselves do not see it and hug their chains, we have a great educational work to do. With age come the inner, the higher life. Who would be forever young, to dwell always in externals? Woman has been the great unpaid laborer of the world. The prolonged slavery of woman is the darkest page in human history. When women understand that governments and religions are human inventions, that Bibles, prayer books, catechisms, and encyclical letters are all emanations from the brains of man, they will no longer be oppressed by the injunctions that come to them with the divine authority of asterisk thus saith the Lord. Asterisk. Nothing adds such dignity to character as the recognition of one's self-sovereignty. Out of the doctrine of original sin grew the crimes and miseries of asceticism, celibacy and witchcraft, woman becoming the helpless victim of all these delusions. Every truth we see is one to give to the world, not to keep to ourselves alone. It is the inalienable right of all to be happy. Nature, like a loving mother, is ever trying to keep land and sea, mountain, and valley, each in its place, to hush the angry winds and waves, balance the extremes of heat and cold, of rain and drought, that peace, harmony and beauty may reign supreme. Dress loose, take a great deal of exercise, and be particular about your diet and sleep sound enough, the body has a great effect on the mind. Where no individual in a community is denied his rights, the mass are the more perfectly protected in theirs, for whenever any class is subject to fraud or injustice, it shows that the spirit of tyranny is at work, and no one can tell where or how or when the infection will spread. I decline to accept Hebrew mythology as a guide to 20th century science. The Bible contains some of the most sublime passages in English literature, but is also full of contradictions, inconsistencies, and absurdities. The more complete the despotism, the more smoothly all things move on the surface. My religious superstition gave place to rational ideas based on scientific facts, and in proportion as I looked at everything from a new standpoint, I grew more happy day by day. The Bible teaches that woman brought sin and death into the world, that she precipitated the fall of the race, that she was arraigned before the judgment seat of heaven, tried, condemned and sentenced. Marriage for her was to be a condition of bondage, maternity a period of suffering and anguish, and in silence and subjection, she was to play the role of a dependent on man's bounty for all her material wants, and for all the information she might desire. Here is the Bible position of woman briefly summed up. A man in love will jump to pick up a glove or a bouquet for a silly girl of 16, whilst at home he will permit his aged mother to carry pails of water and armfuls of wood, or his wife to lug a 20-pound baby, hour after hour, 
without ever offer. When we consider that women are treated as property it is degrading to women that we should treat our children as property to be disposed of as we see fit. In her present ignorance, woman's religion, instead of making her noble and free, by the wrong application of great principles of right and justice, has made her bondage but more certain and lasting, her degradation more hopeless and complete. Men think that self-sacrifice is the most charming of all the cardinal virtues for women, and in order to keep it in healthy working order, they make opportunities for its illustration as often as possible. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.